Hello and welcome to Art Show. I'm Craig Stover and with me today I have the fabulous Amanda Tinker. Hi Amanda, how are you? Hi Craig, how are you? Good, good. So before we begin, I think it's best to uh, share some pictures of yours so the people who are unfamiliar with your work can get an idea of what it is you do. Great. So hopefully you can see on the screen. Yeah. So I, I picked some of these from the website, and of course, some of these were my favorite. Can, can you tell me about this one in particular? Um, yeah, this is um, an image of a jacket that was owned by my husband's grandfather. Uh, or uh, we, we had moved into his house after he passed away, and we uh, had kind of taken on this process of going through all of his old things and deciding what we were going to keep and what we were going to discard. And it kind of became an interesting um, process of thinking about what we valued. Mm -hmm. Wanted to remember him. And so this is one of the things that um, made us think of him. And, and I decided to kind of show it in his garden. We now live in his house and he had a beautiful garden. And so we, we I hung it out in the garden. I love that photograph. Thank you. Next. My, my daughter, Julianne, also out, out in the garden. We spent a lot of time in the backyard. And that's where this photograph was taken about a couple of years ago. Very nice. Now, this is this is the kind of stuff that I was introduced to you by. So this particular series. And what's the series called? This is a series called Small Animal. And and I don't know how much you want me to say about it now, but it's it's been going on since about 2012. So over uh, 10 years, I've been working on this series. And these are, this is a newer one from that series where I arranged things behind a large piece of glass that came from my husband's grandfather's uh, greenhouse. Mm. And so th things from that garden uh, along with family members are arranged behind this glass. I assume the bugs are prop bugs. Yes. <laughs> <They're> not, <laughs> <they're not healed. laughs> Or cutouts or toy bugs right this is this this is a different series or is it part of the same one yeah all these silhouettes are part of the same series and behind that same piece of glass and i think you're going to show the setup at some point um and these are nasturtiums well which is a, a potted plant i had growing out and um you can actually eat this plant it's really delicious peppery tasting plant these are the leaves from the plant hmm. This is one of my favorites. Thank you. Uh, um, and you'll know an older series of um, these were some of them were salt prints and some of them were made from printing out paper, which is no longer around all sodium chloride papers. Um, really beautiful, warm tone, very tiny prints. And these were when I first started working with the four by five camera. Um, and making these uh, self portraits indoors, which which were all kind of performance based um, and setting up objects and and um, what looks like a kind of traditional portrait setup uh, and making these self portraits. I love the geometry in that picture. This is a, this one, this is an older piece, correct? Yeah, this is from grad school. Um, I went to grad school at Tyler School of Arts. I worked with Martha Madigan and Michael Beacott and who were amazing teachers. And th these were all um, medium format camera. I was using Hasselblad camera and layering images in the dark room. So my landscape images layered over photographs I would take off the television of natural disasters. So lightning storms in this mm. case, tornadoes or hurricanes. And I montage those images um, in the dark room and alter the negatives by scratching and painting on them. Very nice. Oh, I didn't know that you knew Martha. We'll, we'll have to have a conversation about her. Yes, she was, <laughs> she was great. And this is another one of my um, kids. What about another one of my kids? I have three yeah. kids. Yeah, sure. Three models. Why not? <laughs> cooperative now but he uh this is ryan and yeah i but again things taken from um my husband's grip our home now but uh, as we were kind of renovating and throwing things out and this was a piece of screen that i thought was so beautiful um mm -hmm. that was my son behind 
it really works with the image. I really, really appreciate that. So uh, this is uh, an image that you sent me about your setup, about how you do it. Can you tell us a little bit about how you set things up and the equipment that you use for this? Yeah, so I use um, an eight by 10 inch view camera or sometimes a four by five inch view camera. And I'm sure some of the people watching this will know what that camera is like, but if you don't, it's a really large camera, especially the eight by 10 camera. It looks like one of those old fashioned cameras where you get under the hood mm. and you're uh, composing things on a ground glass. It's a big piece of glass at the back of the camera that is ground. And so it has this really beautiful effect where everything inside of the camera is upside down and backwards because of the nature of optics and um, and kind of floating and moving. And, and that the camera itself gave me the idea to arrange things behind glass. I just mm -hmm. love on glass of the camera and the way things looked and, and you know, just beginning to use this camera uh, it became a source of inspiration. And so I started spray painting these pieces of glass with um, just like frosting, like you can buy this <laughs> frost, okay. spray paint, um, which makes things look a little less readable. And then I arranged, you can see here, uh, paper cutouts from vintage identification guides, or sometimes they're my own paper cutouts or plants from the garden, my kids' toys, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then the nature of the camera transforms uh, transforms the subject matter so it becomes something so different from what mm -hmm. uh, it, it just uh, it's part of the nature of photography that I love. Do you find that your process remains constant or does it change or evolve uh, with each new series? Um, I do get a little... I don't know if bored is the right word, but I get mm -hmm. uh, antsy and I I will switch back and forth between projects. I was doing this for a while while I would uh, work on the silhouettes. I got a little, ran out of ideas and I would run back to the salt prints that I was doing, the self portraits and mm -hmm. bounce around from projects. So I usually mm -hmm. have one thing going on at the same time, which I, I find a lot of people, a lot of artists work that way, but just keeps the um keeps the energy going i guess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one project starts to wane i can i can go to another and find a, a new source of inspiration speaking of inspiration so i i saw that you had your your kids obviously you're going to be in your photograph was photography a part of your childhood um i started taking pictures i think when i was 14 mm -hmm. i actually took a, a summer course at moore college of art and design mm -hmm. They do these summer programs, and I had a, a Pentax K1000 camera, mm -hmm. which was a great 35 millimeter camera. And that's when I started. I actually wanted to study journalism. Mm -hmm. as I started as a journalism major and switched to photography when I came to Drexel University mm -hmm. and um, and met some of the professors in the program there. And and, um, and I've been photographing ever since. So it's ages. What, what was your first exposure to art can you can you remember uh, anything that shook you as a kid or anything you know I my mom was a, a great lover of art and yeah go to, yeah, yeah and and she's a lot of like colonial era like design furniture design and art so we we were I was exposed to art at a pretty young age I think more the inspiration maybe came from um, you know, my father's love of landscape and nature and gardening. So maybe mm -hmm. those together kind of evolved into the kind of work that I'm making now. Yeah, I do see like a lot of nature in your work. So that I assume that is that is that and something that you consciously put in or does it sort of creep in? You know, I don't I I I don't know why it started that way, but I I grew up at the edge of the Jersey Pine Barrens mm -hmm. and my father, my grandfather was a farmer. My father was a, uh, is, is a, a wonderful gardener. And so I think I was just surrounded by that. It's just such a part of my life to go mm -hmm. out to the Pine Barrens or go to the Jersey shore and, and uh, see the landscape around me. And mm -hmm. 
when I began photographing, those were the things I gravitated towards and, and have stayed with me. Do you consider your your artworks uh, to be like autobiographical or do you think of them as separate from that? Or is it like a mixture? Oh, it's so interesting. I don't, maybe it's a mixture. No one's ever asked me that. And I don't know if um, autobiographical be, would be the right word, but they are really personal. Mm -hmm. um, and they come from a very personal place, but I, I try to make them universal enough that people might feel like they have access to them. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense, but, you know, I think a lot about um, the beauty of small nature, the small mm -hmm. things in the garden and how valuable they are, especially right now with mm -hmm. the environment kind of right. exploding around us. <laughs> You're talking about how hot it is. Um, and so I don't, I wouldn't say it's political work, but certainly, you know, I hope that it means more than just something that's personal to me. I, I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, I, I get it. I understand what you're doing. Uh, so you, I read some of your website. So you, a lot of it is really personal, you know, uh, from your husband and your kids and, you know, your, even the first picture that we showed. So that's, that's why I was starting to ask about you know, the autobiographical nature of it. Yeah, and but. I think, um, no, and, and I, I had in my mind, I had in my mind the silhouettes, but d definitely the family work is, mm -hmm. is in, some of the, the work is intensely personal. Mm -hmm. Some of it is about, um, you know, hereditary disorders that are passed down in my family and um, some of the stories that are important to people that have passed away are things that, uh, get me thinking and get me making work so yeah I, I don't it's definitely personal and um autobiographical is never a word I use but I I like it I <laughs> <laughs> you can start folding that in um, <laughs> so I'm curious when I'm, I'm I'm sort of hung up on process but I'm kind of interested in it um I'm curious about do you sketch out your ideas uh ahead of time or do they sort of develop spontaneously on the spot it's maybe a little bit of both and I was trying to think about like how you know how do the ideas come to me and it's almost like a um, lightning strike I don't know how else to describe mm -hmm. it I'm sitting around and I'll, I'll think of a, a scenario or a setup and then I have and then I keep thinking about it until I have to make, like I have to make it and I make it and then usually that thing, uh, I'll make variations on that. So the bird uh, head, I don't know, the one where I was setting up with the birds and I don't know if you showed the entire piece that came, that, that became, but it was the circling birds on a body mm -hmm. and different variations of that with different kinds of leaves and um, so it usually will be like an image that's in my head that I have to make. And then that be mm. gets repeated. Do you, when you make your work, do you ever find yourself like doing reshoots? Like do you? Occasionally I, I don't do that so much because I find it so hard. Mm -hmm. it's never, like it's never, it never works. <laughs> and you wanted it to work. I mean, they, I, as an artist, you might have this feeling as well, but uh, if I try it and I fail, you know, usually if I try again and I can't, I can't get it to work, I just, I tend to move on. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in the, in this digital age that we live in, what is it that draws you to use these old techniques, these platinum palladium prints and the, uh, the silver gelatin, what, what drives you for that? Um, I just love it. I don't know. I've never really known how to answer that question because I mm -hmm. do incorporate some digital techniques. Like I, more and more I'm making digital negatives. I'm teaching it to my students and I'm mm -hmm. how my students use it. But I think I just really enjoy being in a dark room. And I think of my materials as not just like a camera and light and, and paper, but also chemistry like platinum palladium and silver nitrate and um the iron salts of cyanotype like the like a painter mm -hmm. ma uses material those the chemistry is material 
also is another tool in the toolbox. So if I switch to digital, that sort of goes away and it's hard to imagine yet. I certainly don't, you know, I have nothing against it and I yeah. may you know, end up in that place, but it just, it's so much fun to be in the dark. Room. It is. <laughs> That's kind of a leading question because I already knew what your answer was going to be. Because yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I have a love of those older uh, methods as well. And I, I also love the fact that I, I love the intimate size of your work, that the scale of the work. But I was just wondering, if, have you ever felt a desire to make like larger works? Yeah, I have done some of it. I, it gets a little tricky with chemistry like platinum and palladium because it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. And some of it is it's not the, the nicest, you know, health wise chemistry. Right. Like stay at a smaller scale, but I have been thinking more and more about going back to silver gelatin printing, which would be more manageable at a larger scale. I love large prints, and after working with like pretty tiny prints for you know over ten years, I am thinking more about how to make big work again. I look forward to to seeing you know what what comes out. And speaking of what comes next, do, do you have a new series that you're mulling about, or something that you want to pursue? I'm thinking, you know, sort of the in the same vein as the um, silhouettes, but maybe, and I'm just thinking about this, so I don't know if it's going to work, but um, I, I keep seeing uh, vases and urns and jardiniers, I think old like Victorian mm -hmm. papers um, with stuff spilling out of it. Mm -hmm. Another way to talk about, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in, people's relationship to nature and the kind of ambivalence we have up towards it now and how to play with the potted plant mm. or a jar of uh, a vase of flowers in that same kind of format that I've been working at. So we'll see if I can get it to visually work, but um, I'm at the beginning of that. Uh, I like that your, your work, I see references in your work uh to other artists and especially the old you know old photographers and whatnot but i'm curious do you do you look at other artists are there other artists that inspire you well i teach photo history so i am just constantly looking at other work and all kinds of references are there with like some intentional and some not but the most direct references i think are the people that i studied with so definitely martha madigan mm -hmm. You know, her photograms were so inspirational to me as a student. And in, a, in some ways, I'm doing something similar on a smaller scale, you know, mm -hmm. an flower and body. And she was doing that on a large, a much larger scale, a different process. But she was a huge influence, Catherine Jansen. Mm -hmm. I worked with as an undergrad student. I was a studio assistant of hers and learned so much from her. Um, I, there were just a lot of remarkable and still are women photographers that I was surrounded by. Um, uh, Susan Fenton, mm -hmm. Ella, Ella Fish is still, I believe she's still teaching at UR. Mm -hmm. Here's um, who are so inspirational. I teach with um, uh, Andrea Modica. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, and, you know, Stuart Rome, Paul Runyon, these are all people that are colleagues of mine who are really inspirational. That's great. I, mean, I actually have Stuart coming on for an interview very, very shortly. So um, I've got, you know, time flies when I'm doing these interviews. Uh, <laughs> I've got one final question for you. And it's a kind of a, a throw you for a loop question, hopefully. It's a little it's a little interesting. At least I threw the last person I asked this for. Uh, what does making art do for you? It's a oh. <laughs> It's kind of, you know what it is? I, I almost feel guilty. It is kind of a selfish thing. It's, yeah. um, it's just personally gratifying to make something that hopefully will outlive you. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I, it's, you know, maybe fear of mortality, but this idea of being able to leave something behind, mm -hmm. um, making something for the future, not mm -hmm. just present. And I've been working on these portfolios, trying to make three of them to, so that each of my kids can have one of these portfolios. So 
maybe this idea of being able to just leave a little piece of myself behind at some point. I hope that's not too morbid. But no, that- no, that makes perfect sense. As somebody who's in the same boat, I, I totally get it. So, well, I want to thank you. It's always a pleasure talking with you. Uh, I want to thank you for coming by today. And I want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, please make sure to like and subscribe to our show with Craig Stover so you can see upcoming videos. So if you want to see more, uh, just search the web for Amanda Tinker. Thanks again, Amanda. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Craig. I really appreciate it. Take care. Bye.